Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I pray you're all well. Allah bless you all. Okay, let's start Al Fatiha. Al Rahman al Rahim. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا ومنحنا يا ربنا علما وعملا وقربا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أكرمنا ولا تهنا وأعطنا ولا تحرمنا وآثرنا ولا تؤثر علينا وأرضنا وارض عنا يا أرحم الراحمين ويا أكرم الأكرمين ويا ذا الجلال والإكرام So Alhamdulillah الله رب العالمين We were looking at the verses of Surah An-Nisa and we last looked at these uh, verses of how the Munafiqun were uh, being with the Prophet, some of them, you know, talking the talk when there was no battle, they want to fight, and then when it was commanded, when it, uh, when it was made obligatory on them, you know, they fled, right? They didn't want to fight, <coughs> and you know, uh, so the, the verses ended on, you know, establishing uh, that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the Messenger of Allah, subhanahu wa taala, and you, you know, they can. You know, they can make any sort of insinuations they want, but Allah knows the truth, and the revelation that the Prophet brings, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that establishes the truth. So let's continue from there, and the ayah that we look at today starts with, "Man yuti'i Rasula, faqad ata'a Allah, wa man tawalla, fama arsanaka alayhim hafiza." Whoever obeys the Messenger has truly obeyed Allah. But whoever turns away, then know that we have not sent you, O Prophet, as a keeper over them. <coughs> so, after establishing that the Messenger, Sayyidina Muhammad, is the Messenger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this verse now starts talking about the implications of that, which is, he is a Rasul, he is a Messenger, he is a representative on behalf of God. He comes and tells us what God wants. So just like if a person was to receive a command directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as messengers do, they must obey it. It's the same for humanity. It's the, 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 the go-between between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this tremendous messenger and all those messengers, are only telling us uh, what Allah wants because we unfit and you know incapable of receiving revelation ourselves of communicating with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala receiving communication from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ourselves so uh, this tremendous lofty rank uh, comes with characteristics one of them is that the messenger has to be honored and if you don't honor the messenger then it's it's as though um you know there's dishonor being shown towards the one who sends the messenger and more practically uh, the, the messenger has to be obeyed so the o obedience to the messenger is wajib it's obligatory just like the obedience would be if had allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told his creation something directly so it's like that so it says so man yuti'ir rasula faqad ata'a allah <coughs> Whoever obey, <coughs> obeys the messenger <coughs> who delivers the message on behalf of God, then Faqad, so he truly and really, you know, he has obeyed Allah. So obedience of the messenger is obedience of Allah. So don't think, well, you know, I'm going to, you know, so, so someone shouldn't think that he doesn't speak on behalf of God and his command is something else and God's command is something else. No. Whoever obeys the messenger, truly he has obeyed Allah, the supreme being, the perfect creator. And this word this um, <coughs> inspires awe in the listener, the, the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the effect it, it has on, on him. And so what we find is, like Abu Saud mentions, um, and Alusi mentioned that um, uh, what the Munafiqun were doing is they were having digs, uh, you know, they, they were saying things to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For example, um, 
it's narrated so that he said that whoever loves me loves Allah and whoever whoever obeys me he obeys Allah directly right so the munafiqun what they were doing they were saying have you have you heard have you heard what he's saying you know he's told us this they were saying that he's committed shirk hashah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they said that he tells us not to worship anyone besides Allah and he's put himself you know in the same position a'udhu billah right it's just their ignorant ignorance what you'll find is people who don't want to accept uh, something accept the truth they will find any way to twist it so a matter can be good righteous wholesome and they will uh, find a way to twist it to make it look uh, like it's the complete opposite of what it is and this is what they were doing so then subhanahu wa ta'ala says o man tawalla so whoever turns away then it's implied you turn away from them whoever turns away from you from uh, obeying your command you don't uh, you know don't waste your time and energy on them right and why because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of them right and you know uh, whoever disobeys you then his you know his crime is against himself right he's only harming himself why because we've sent you as a messenger uh, <coughs> and fama arsalna kanaka alayhim hafiza we haven't sent you as an overseer over them right so like imagine uh, a police officer who's there to enforce uh, the application of the law in a place right so that police officer you know it's his role to make sure everyone there is obeying the law but that's not the role of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah has given everyone free choice you choose your actions and you're judged because of your you know for your actions so he's saying that we haven't sent you as an overseer over them they can do whatever they want and they'll be judged for whatever they do so you o messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam as you said in the previous ayah tawakkal ala allah put your trust in allah and you know it's you know don't you worry about it fama anaka alayhim hafiza so now we have a, an example of this kind of attitude from them <coughs> where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa yaquluna ta'ah fa idha barazu min 'indika bayyata ta'ifatun minhum ghayra alladhi taqul and they say we obey but when they leave you a group of them would spend the night contradicting what they said uh, wallahu yaktubu ma ma yubayyitun fa a'rid anhum oh it's in this verse that uh, fa a'rid anhum wa tawakkal 'ala allah so turn away from them uh, uh, he said allah recalls all their schemes so turn away from them and put your trust in allah and allah is sufficient as a trustee of affairs beautiful so he says wa yaquluna ta'a so they keep saying to you a messenger again and again and again ta'atun right tremendous like uh, so what it imply what it means is our affair our matter or our relationship with you is obedience huge amazing obedience that's what you're going to get from us right so they're lying so uh, this group of munafiqun they're saying that we we live to obey and we live to serve basically right but the, he says fa idha barazu min indika so when they leave from your presence and it was interesting as though baraza buruz <coughs> was something to become manifest and to you know like to almost like to stick out and you know for it to be seen so it's like their real selves come out beautiful choice of word honestly uh, honestly if their real selves come out when they leave the messenger that's all a fake show and a display but when they leave him their real selves come come uh, and what do they do bayyata bayyata ta'ifatun minhum ghayra alladhi taqul so the word bayyata um it's related to night time so what it is to beat what it means is to plot and plan uh, or engage in something at night so he's saying that a group of them a ta'ifatun minhum meaning that there are some who are the brains of the project and there are others who are just lemmings they just follow 
and their following is support of the rest of the munafiqun but they don't actively plan and carry anything out they're just there for the moral support which is enough of a crime so uh, he says that a group of them they spend the night or at night um it could be otherwise as well um that you know they have this plan but generally the indication of night is present that you know they spend that time and why because at night you know you don't have the distractions of the day you can plan you can focus you can look into uh, matters deeply so that's why it's mentioned so uh, at night this tremendous group of this not tremendous this this particular uh, yeah, this particular group of them they spend the night uh, engaging in or planning غَيْرَ uh, الَّذِي تَقُولُ The exact opposite of what you said, the matters that you talk about, the obedience to Allah and the goodness, and they go and plan and prepare the exact opposite of this, right? وَاللَّهُ يَكْتُبُ مَا يُبَيِّتُونَ Whereas Allah, whilst Allah is writing down all that they are plotting and planning and scheming at night, Right in these moments, so he's gonna expose them. He's gonna tell you their affairs. This is what the what the what the said. That what he implies is that whatever they're planning, Allah will tell you clearly. Right, and this happened time and time and time again in the Quran, um, uh, with Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salud and others. Time they were having private discussions, and Allah subhanahu wa taala would tell the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam exactly what um, they were saying either in the Quran or otherwise or through other forms of revelation <coughs> and <clears throat> so he says um, and Allah the supreme being nothing escapes him he knows everything they can't they can't uh, win if they're trying to oppose Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's writing down and this is like you know uh, when when someone finds something significant important that needs to be uh, logged and recorded and it's, it's written down so uh, he, he, he'll tell the Prophet about what they're planning and uh, what's been written down will be presented as proof on the, on the Day of Judgment so they'll be judged and punished accordingly Right, with the proof there. فَأَعْرِضْ عَنْهُمْ So you turn away from them. So so don't worry about them. Don't f- you know focus on them. Leave them. Right, and and that's the advice for anyone that's you know turning to Allah, doing good, and others, uh, you know, are just trying to you know criticize or whatever. Just just leave it. Right, leave them. Turn away from them and focus on Allah. Focus on pleasing Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Allah takes care of them. Right, so he says, "For anhum, so turn away from them. What ala Allah and put your trust in Allah. Um, so tawakkul, as we've said before, has this indication of choosing Allah to be your wakil, right? Choosing Allah to be your representative. Allah will take care of these matters for you. So a wakil in business, in business is like if you need to buy a car, but you don't know, you know, what's what." You, you tell someone, here's the money, go find me a car that's suitable for me, right? For we give him your requirements. He knows about cars, he goes, looks, and finds you something, he brings it. That's what we mean, right? For tawakkal ala Allah. So put your, all of your trust uh, in Allah and let him settle in all these matters for you. Wa kafa, we've said this before, kafa is this meaning of something amazing. It's amazing. It's just amazing, right? Kafa uh, billahi wakila. It's amazing how Allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the supreme king, suffices as uh, a wakil, someone who has been entrusted to look after your affairs, to settle your affairs. Meaning is, is just, you know, he doesn't let you down. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always brings about what's best for you. Proper tawakkul and trust in Allah brings this result. And it's amazing how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does it. So that's, uh, you know, the thing with this law. And <coughs> it's not as if that, it's not as if they don't know who, uh, what the situation is, or they don't know who the Messenger of Allah is, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They know He's a Messenger, and they know this is revelation from God. And how do they know? It's the Quran. So uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنِ You know, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنِ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا So it's as though the ayah is saying that are they turning away? So there's shock 
and criticism in this question that <clears throat> are they turning away and not reflecting on the Quran do they not reflect on the Quran had it not had it been from any anyone other than Allah they would have certainly found in it many inconsistencies <coughs> so what is tadabbur right you, you hear this word a lot especially when people are talking about the tafsir of the Quran or reflecting on the Quran tadabbur comes from the word from dubur which is the end of something so tadabbur what it means is to reflect on the final implications of the Quran. What is a verse saying? What does that imply? What does that imply? What does that imply? You keep going until you get to the final implications of, of, of an ayah. How does it relate to me? How does it relate to this situation? The context? How many things can be done from it? This is how the ulama deduced, you know, and it, it, <clears throat> the deeper someone's reflection and knowledge is, the more they will get from it. You know, like many of the mujtahidun, we can read a verse and just pass it by, and the, the scholars uh, who design who came up with the founding principles of the schools of law for example you know they would look into the quran read a verse and you know understand so much more than what we understand and then derive principles of law from this so <clears throat> you know like imam shafi'i famously found the uh, you know one, a proof of, of ijma in one of the ayat of the quran and you know we to be a ghayra sabil al mu'minin and so you know it's it's really uh, something really profound and what you'll find is one of the one of the things that you, you need to know is the basic meaning of the quran what is the verse saying and then you start to reflect and you know every time i've done this i've found that the meanings come pouring in and it's you know it really hits hard so there's something that, you, that i could tell you that uh, like i could tell you for example <coughs> um ala kulli shay'in qadir, and he is has a, a power over everything he can do anything um i was once reflecting on this and uh, the qaf has this quality of isti'la where you lift the back of the tongue instead of saying qadir you say qadir qa and that had a powerful effect on me just listening to the strength of the sound it's not like yasir ayyu ayyuhum the ya it's not like the ya it's different it's strength and so that enhanced the power of the word and then there were other meanings that was uh, that were coming through so this is you know this is something i don't do unfortunately um uh, uh, the teacher of uh, one of my teachers uh, two of my teachers uh, sheikh fadl abbas used to say that if you're ever going to teach a verse uh, then um, re recite it a hundred or so times and uh, and then and then teach it reflect on it recite it with reflection <laughs> i wish i could <coughs> and that will give you an insight and uh, instead i rely on the works the insight of the ulama <laughs> and uh, so so this is it so uh, are they turning away and are they not lecting on uh, the the quran on this recital on this revelation do they not see that it's from god there's more than enough proof that this is from god ولو كان من عندي غير الله had it been from anyone anyone else besides Allah لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا they would have found in it they certainly would have found in it many many inconsistencies now this verse has been uh, interpreted and understood in a number of number of ways I'm just going to give you a simple meaning and I'll touch on uh, a secondary meaning so Abu Saud says that this verse is basically saying look at <coughs> saying to the Munafiqun this fits with the context best look at uh, this Quran it says X Y and Z will happen like the believers will you know have uh, for example through to room uh, that saying that the Romans will be the Persians in a battle and that day the believers will be you know uh, ecstatic rejoicing and that was the day of the battle of Badr and there were many other prophecies that came in the Quran that were proved true don't the munafiqun look at this don't they look at how the kuffar keep getting defeated right and you know in the lifetime of the prophet what, how events were unfolding and <coughs> do they not see that when they're alone and they're plotting and planning and scheming and they're saying things contrary to you know what they're showing the messenger Allah exposes them 
right? And so Abu Surud says, this is what the verse means, that had it been from anyone else, um, there would have been um, ikhtilaf, so you can translate it as inconsist inconsistency, or you can say like the Quran, would have, its meanings have been opposed to uh, reality. So any news that it gives that this will happen or that will happen, the opposite would have happened. And had you been discussing in private matters A, B and C, but uh, the Quran says they were talking about D, E and F, then it would have been the op or contrary to what you've been saying. But rather, what the Qur'an is showing a degree of consistency, you know, absolute consistency. Whatever prophecy is made, is fulfilled. And whatever you discuss in private, it's mentioned, right? And it's clearly stated. So that's what the Qur'an is saying. And in that is more than enough, sufficient proof that this is revelation from God. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is a true messenger from God. What more do you want, right? <coughs> so that's the, that's the implication of the verse. Another verse is the majority of the other scholars of uh, tafsir added other meanings to this, which, are all, which is correct, but Abu Saud's interpretation goes with the context better. But what the Jumhur said is fantastic. They're saying, look, had it been from anyone else, then you would have seen, uh, seen in inconsistencies. Some would have been uh, really eloquent. Like, for example, um, you look at the poetry of some of the Jahili Arabs, these people who, you know, like there were seven or ten, there's a difference, uh, or poems that were hung in the Kaaba. And, you know, and they said, oh, this is the peak and the pinnacle of Arabic eloquence. And you read them, and some of the Qasida is, you know, is, yeah, okay, you know, you're saying something. And some of it is like, wow, you know, you you've really, you know, you've really said something beautiful here. And the same with like, um, <coughs> For example, some one of the later poets, Al Mutanabbi, he's got some corkers, really excellent lines of poetry, and and then you look at uh, some of his other poetry, and the the scholars of literature, the Nuqadu Shi'ar, they criticized, you know, some of his lines. This is a, a, the wrong use of this word. This is a poor usage here. That his meter here is like uh, the, the sentence structure is really complicated. That it makes it difficult for the listener or the reader of the po the poem to understand what he's actually trying to say. So you know, it would have been like this. But Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, it's all a consistent, the pinnacle of Arabic excellence in terms of the news and uh, you know that the Quran gives that this will happen and that will happen or that this has happened, that has happened and the predictions, all of it is true and there's many many other aspects which we study in Ulum al-Quran but uh, there are many other aspects of um, uh, the Quran and its wording that um, show that it's from God it's from God, you know, the, the miracles in the linguistic style and what the Quran says and all the facts that it's saying, that it's telling us, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's beyond the capacity of a human being to have produced it. <clears throat> so, so that's what was said. And then, so next we have the وَإِذَا جَاءَهُمْ أَمْرٌ مِّنَ الْأَمْنِ أَوِ الْخَوْفِ أَذَاعُوا بِهِ And when they hear of news of security or fear, they publicize it. وَلَوْ رُدُّوهُ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ وَإِلَى أُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْهُمْ لَعَلِمَهُ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَنْبِطُونَهُ مِنْهُمْ And had they referred it to the messenger or their authorities, those with sound judgment among them would have validated it. Okay. And so he says, وَلَوْ لَا فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَتُهُ لَاتَّبَعْتُمُ الشَّيْطَانَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا Okay, what's being said? So the same munafiqoon, what do they do? وَإِذَا جَاءَهُمْ أَمْرٌ So when this tremendous matter uh, comes to them, a matter of safety and security of fear, أَذَاعُوا به. What's happening? When news about particular battles or about particular military campaigns that the Muslims have engaged in, when this news comes to them, they go and they spread it, right? And this is really dangerous, right? Because um, if, let's say they think, um, uh, let's say they, they hear news that um, the Muslims have uh, won a battle when in fact they've actually lost, right? And you know, everyone who hears this, <coughs> without all the facts, 
um, <clears throat> could start thinking, yeah, yeah, we're all right, we're safe. And then there could be an attack. And because they've let their guard down, there could be problems. Or the same is, you know, if they've, um, you know, if there's a matter for them to be afraid of, like, you know what, there's a big force coming, we need to be ready. You know, what this lot could do is they, they, they start, they spread it and obviously they add their lies and they add their own uh, additions to it. So it makes people whose Iman is new or people whose faith is weak, it makes them doubt in the validity of the message of Islam, in the validity of the messengerhood of uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's a problem. So, <clears throat> so this is, there's a lesson in this. Whenever you hear something, a rumor or so-and-so said this happened and that happened, if you don't confirm it, if it's not validly validated and confirmed, don't spread it. There's a hadith in Sahih Muslim, Kafa as well. <coughs> Same word, Kafa bil mar'i ithman an yuhadditha bi kulli ma sami'a. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's sufficiently wicked uh, a sin for uh, for a person to uh, to speak about everything he's heard. Any rumor that comes, just go and talk about it. And no, so he's saying, don't do this, right? So these people, they would hear the news that came to them, and <clears throat> whether before it's confirmed, unconfirmed, or they would go spread it, or they would add stories and add versions and events, and you know they would go tell people, and that would cause doubts, and that would cause. Uh, other issues amongst the Muslims and it's not good for the stability and safety of a community. On top of that, they may not have known all the matter, all the facts. <coughs> so, they may be talking about something that's not, uh, you know, with incomplete knowledge and had they gone and got, got it confirmed from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or the, you know, the elite of the companions, uh, they would have explained the matter as it is and it would have been understood. So <clears throat> this shows, and the ulama derived from this that um, uh, it's someone who doesn't know something has to go take it from someone who does. So people who are not free and who don't have all the requisite tools and knowledge of, uh, you know, the the all the sciences of Arabic of the Arabic language of usul al fiqh, of fiqh of aqidah, all of these things, they can't go and derive principles uh, and rulings directly from the Quran. If it's, if it's a clear verse saying, you know, in the khamru al maisir, you know, saying you know wine and um, uh, chance, uh, not maisir is um, yeah. Uh, games of chance and these sorts of things are from the work of the devil shun them yeah okay that's obvious but anything beyond this anything detailed or then no you go to those who are qualified right so uh, the saying so they go and they spread it without any care or concern so allah said if only if they had consigned if they had taken it back to the messenger the messenger of whom allah the messenger who knows the matter, who knows all the information, all the facts. Um, minhum, and to the ulil amr, the people of authority. So after the passing of the messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, or, or for this in this context, you know those elite of the Sahaba who are, you know, who are in in the council of the messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He would ask for their opinions and, you know, take their advice, and they would plan. Uh, strategies together they know the context as well so before going and spreading it go to this, these people and get it confirmed what would happen then? minhum. so this word there's a two positions on this um, there's a number of positions but who is the al-mustambitun uh, uh, let's talk about this so what does istimbat mean? so <clears throat> you might have heard of this with regards to ijtihad and deducing rulings. So it means deduction. So the word nabata, <coughs> it comes from a word for, of extracting water from the ground, either you know via a well or through a spring. So the one who do is doing the extracting is the mustambit. So, um, so there's two positions. One is the alladina yastanbitunahu. Uh, the verse is saying, um, <coughs> one is the is how it's been presented uh, in uh, the translation. So in the translation, it's saying that the Alladina Yastambitunahu 
are the companions, the elite companions and the Prophet. Those who would <coughs> deduce the correct understanding from the facts available, right? And this is where the ijtihad element comes in. That's one meaning of it. The second meaning is, <coughs> is those who are trying to get the matter out. Those who are trying to learn and understand the matter. Meaning uh, this group of munafiqun. That you know, if you really want to know what's going on, instead of just spreading it, <coughs> go to those who know. And then when they would have, when they told these people those who are trying to understand the matter and extract the proper uh, or extract the information about it would have found out la uh, alimahu you could say la alimuhu that you know they they would have known it um <coughs> but here it shows you know what they're trying to do they're trying to get out all of the relevant all of the details you know when something comes and and then they spread it uh, with additions or without, right? Uh, or if you go with the first position, then it's talking about the, the ulama uh, of the Sahaba and the Ummah when it comes to other rulings, other matters. But here in the context, it would be to the Messenger of Allah and then the Sahaba who are qualified to um, uh, look at the matter and explain it to them uh, as, it de as it deserves to be explained. So if we go with the, the second position, <coughs> this alladhina uh, yastambitoona who is criticism for them that they're out there they're trying to ferret it out you know they're trying to figure it out and ferret out all the details some are, some are not even relevant may, may not even be relevant to them and you know it's not their business but then they go and you know uh, they're making that making it their business so you can understand it in both ways both are valid um <coughs> Uh, and then he says, "Walawla fadlu Allahi alaykum." Had it not been for the tremendous virtue, uh, the, the generosity of Allah, the grace of Allah on you, wa rahmatuhu and His mercy. So who is he speaking to? The generality of the believers now, right? Had it not been for Allah's grace and tremendous mercy upon you, let tabatum shaytana illa qalila. You would have all uh, ended up obeying and assiduously going out of your way to follow every step of the devil except for a minority of you, a few of you. Those with the, the knowledge of understanding of what Allah and His Messenger want and you know how to follow the religion. And so who is uh, the shaitan here? It's these munafiqun. They would have come and they would have caused a lot of uh, fitna and in a sedition and problems in the Muslim community. And it's, but it's rather it's Allah who's protect who's protecting us now, and He was protecting the Sahaba then, and it's His generosity and mercy that are keeping us, you know, uh, on guidance, right? And so there's a general meaning that we can understand that <clears throat> being guided, being a believer, being on the straight path is uh, a, a gift from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So He deserves our thanks, right? And uh, the other meaning is that, you know, the munafiqun, these people there who are trying to, you know, lead these people away and uh, astray and, and cause all of this fitna, many would have succumbed to this matter. And, <coughs> and many would have fallen prey to their, <coughs> to their antics. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, you know, has protected uh, the believers, right, through the ulul amr and those who stand to defend um, the Book of Allah and the Commandments of Allah and the, the Sunnah of His Messenger, right? Um, so that's in a wider context. Okay, so we will we'll stop here and we'll carry on from this point next time, inshaAllah. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum.